in a nutshell, it simply does not require authority to point out that what cannot be true is not true. It is the authority of human reason, so to speak, enjoyed by all who are in possession of their faculties that assures us of the truth of this claim. The question whether Jorge Bergoglio is a public Catholic or a public non-Catholic cannot be a matter of opinion. We know what he professes in public, and we know how he acts in public. That is all we need to be able to make a judgment, not a legal one, not a legal judgment, but a cognitive one. And the objective evidence says, or screams rather, that the man is not a Roman Catholic. Any seven-year-old child would not be allowed to make his first Holy Communion if he uttered the things that Francis professes. Francis is not a Catholic, but a modernist. He's a naturalist, a Sionist, an ecumenist, an indifferentist, a communist. And he embraces a whole lot of other isms that do not begin with Catholic. The evidence against Francis is so overwhelming that no one who knows what Catholicism is and what Francis has been saying and doing can deny it. There is no room for opinion here. No one is allowed to say that a man who professes Francis's heresies and errors is a Catholic. We can say this with certitude because we know what Catholicism is, and therefore we also know, necessarily, what is not Catholicism, that is, what contradicts Catholicism. These are two sides of the same coin. If we know what a Catholic is, then we also know what a heretic is. If you know one, you know the other. Now notice that everything that I've just said pertains entirely to the order of fact, not to the order of law. No Sedevacanist could issue a legal judgment against Francis, because such a legal judgment would indeed require special authority. But the legal judgment, although desirable, is not necessary to be able to know that Francis is an apostate and therefore not Pope. It is not necessary because the fact of Francis' apostasy is manifest. If it weren't manifest, we wouldn't be talking about it. In canonical language, Francis' departure from the faith is notorious in fact, and even in an ecclesiastical trial, what is notorious does not need any further proof, much less an official judgment. Here's a quote on that from the Catholic Encyclopedia. Quote, the judge, and in general the person in authority, holding what is notorious to be certain and proved, requires no further information, and therefore both may and ought to refrain from any judicial inquiry, proof, or formalities which would otherwise be necessary. For these inquiries and formalities having as their object to enlighten the judge are useless when the fact is notorious. Such is the true meaning of the axiom that in notorious matters the judge need not follow the judicial procedure. Unquote. And that is from the entry Notoriety Notorious in the Catholic Encyclopedia of 1911. We've got it linked, of course, in the show notes. So, does this mean that Sedevacanus can demand that others agree with us on the question of whether Francis is a true pope or not? Well, the answer to that is yes and no. We'll need to draw an important distinction here. Binding someone else's conscience would indeed require ecclesiastical authority, and that's something no Sedevacanist has. If any Sedevacanist were to pretend that he has the right of himself to bind somebody else's conscience, he would be mistaken and act unjustly. In other words, no Sedevacantist could say, you must be a Sedevacantist because I say so. That would clearly be impermissible. But then really, nobody is doing that. And if anyone is doing that, he's wrong. At the same time, that's not the whole story. Although we cannot demand that others accept Sedevacantism because we say so, nevertheless we can demand that others accept church teaching, accept the empirically verifiable facts about what Francis says and does, and draw the logically necessary conclusion that follows from both. Sedevacantism is the only conclusion 
that does not run into conflict with Catholic teaching, which means that it's the only conclusion that is possible, and therefore it's also necessary. It's for this reason that others have the obligation to embrace it, not because we say Vacanis say so, as though we had any authority to bind their consciences, but because according to Catholic teaching, no other conclusion is possible, and since we have an obligation to adhere to Catholic teaching, we thus also have an obligation to embrace sedevacantism. In short, the necessity for people to be sedevacantist does not arise from sedevacantist say so, it arises from the fact that all are obliged by Catholic teaching and the manifest empirical facts to arrive at that conclusion. So, it has nothing to do with you know, hubris or pride, arrogance or presumed authority or anything of the kind. It's very much like explaining to someone that if he understands what one means, what two means, what equal means, and what plus means, then he must conclude, necessarily, that one plus one equals two. Or, to use another analogy, if Jack is a bachelor and all bachelors are unmarried, then we must conclude necessarily that Jack is unmarried. No other conclusion is permitted or possible, and we cannot hide behind the cop-out that ooh, we don't have the authority to say that Jack is unmarried. Welcome to the binding force of reason. You are listening to Tratcast, the one-of-a-kind state of Arcantis podcast, that is triumphalist, rigid, intolerant, and everything else that Jorge Bergoglio abhors all in one. Thank <laughs> you.